Let me start by quoting from an article in Christianity Today. The article is entitled, entitled, The Spiritual Power of Physical Touch. In a society where touch is primarily associated with sexual desire, hug a new friend and you might be perceived as coming on too strong. Kiss a work associate, grounds for an harassment lawsuit. When you do touch, when you do touch, it is often marked by awkwardness. The British Medical Journal published an article titled The No Touching Epidemic, an English disease, I would say too, it's an American disease as well, in which symptoms of this illness included a sense of isolation and loneliness, insecurity, emotional inhibition, and inability to communicate with neighbors. Now get this, this article was written in 2019. What has happened since then? It happened before the pandemic and the pandemic's isolating experiences. The pandemic has definitely compounded this problem. It's difficult to know if to hug, who to hug, and when to hug. And now with COVID potentially on the rise, will physical touch be another innocent victim? But really, even before the pandemic, as this article touches upon, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> even before the pandemic, we were moving towards a touchless society, weren't we? It's understandable, really, with the abuse of touch by mostly men in powerful positions, our society has become suspicious of anyone who wants to touch. This is not the case in so many other cultures. Yeah, I remember my good friend in Nigeria, David Hamana, who would grab my hand and hold hands with me as we walked down the street. I personally was mortified, <laughs> but he didn't think anything of it. It was just as natural to him as, as anything, but just because so societal differences, it made me a little bit uncomfortable. But I do believe firmly that Christians need to buck the trend towards a touchless society. That in a safe and trusting environment, physical touch is vital for health and wholeness, for bodies and spirit. Studies have shown, and I've said this before, that if you aren't touched soon after birth, all kinds of negative things will happen. Your immune system doesn't develop properly. Your digestive system tends to have problems. There's a whole rack of health problems that can develop if you don't receive touch in early life. From cradle to the nursing home, deep within us is a longing to be touched. As June would know, premature babies need to be touched. If they aren't touched, they will drift into apathy. They will lose their urge to life, to live, and then eventual death. Preemies. It is also true that in nursing homes, the elderly crave physical touch. They don't get it, do they, Judith? They don't. Residents in nursing homes, studies have shown, who are touched have a much more positive attitude. Studies have also shown that a waiter or a waitress who lightly touches a customer will receive a higher tip. <laughs> and if you watch any sports long enough, you'll know that touch is pretty important in sports as well, huh? with the fist bumps, the chest bumps, the hugs. Our bodies need to touch and to be touched. Again, from the Christianity Today article, a fully Christian understanding of the body recognizes that we are not merely creatures of belief formed by study and sermons. We are beings of longings, desires, and passions that are shaped by our bodies, made in the image of God. Our bodies are created to be linked together in committed 
intimacy with others. Jesus knew that. Jesus touched people. He touched people to affirm their value. He touched them to forgive them. And he touched them to heal them. There are more than 20 accounts in the New Testament where Jesus touched or was touched by people, even going so far as, you remember the woman who had bleeding for 12 years, what did she do? She touched the hem of his garment. What a wonderful story. In touch, there is something of the power of God. In touch, there is something of the power of God. Mind you, touch can be abused just like anything. We all know that. But touch, if done in a sincere and caring way, is so vital for our health and wholeness. Our lesson today is a short passage, three, four simple verses, but it contains a huge message on the need for God's healing and wholeness and on the importance of touch. We are in the early days of the ministry of Jesus. This is Mark chapter one, the beginning of Jesus's ministry. The verses before today's lesson has Jesus getting up early before daylight to go out and pray. The disciples wake up, do not see him. They find him and say, people have already gathered for you, Jesus. Jesus replied, we must go on to other towns as well, and I will preach to them too. That is why I came. So he traveled throughout the region of Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and casting out demons. In one of these villages, we don't know which one, a leper approaches Jesus. And as the crowds looked on in absolute horror, the, ne the leper kneels in front of Jesus. If you choose, you can make me clean. Now, leprosy in the Bible is not necessarily just leprosy. It is defined as any infectious skin disease. It could be leprosy, it could be tuberculosis, it could be any number of skin disorders. It was all lumped together and called leprosy. And according to the Levitical code found in Leviticus, a person with leprosy was untouchable. And I suppose for somewhat justifiable reasons, right? Some of these infectious skin diseases were also contagious. Better to isolate, like we did in our recent pandemic, than risk being infected. But here's the deal. Rather than caring for these people in as loving and caring way as possible, they were simply cast out of Jewish society. Two whole chapters of Leviticus speaks to the law relating specifically to leprosy. Here's just two verses. Anyone with an infection of skin diseases must wear torn clothes, dishevel their hair, cover their upper lip, and shout out, unclean, unclean. They will be unclean as long as they are infected. They are unclean. They must live alone outside the camp. Can you imagine? The shame anyone with leprosy might feel. Imagine the shame of this leper as people cringed and recoiled from him. And it wasn't just because of the skin disease. Jewish teachings also taught that leprosy was a result of what? Sin. Doubling their feelings of disgrace. No one was allowed to touch them, nor were they allowed to touch anyone. You have to understand the tremendous loneliness as these lepers lived their lives separate from family and loved ones. And so it happened on that particular day 
as the crowd surrounded him, this poor, lonely, and desperate um, leper came to Jesus. He didn't yell from a distance saying, unclean, unclean, like he was supposed to do. Fully aware that he was breaking Jewish law, he walked through the crowd, parting it like Moses would part the Red Sea. And he came to Jesus and he knelt down before Jesus. If you choose. And fully aware that he himself was breaking the law. And the whole community watching him intently, Jesus moved with compassion, reached out and touched him. I choose. Jesus chooses to touch the untouchable. What you have here is the plight of the human condition. For we are the untouchables. We are the ones caught up in the bondages of sin. We are the ones dealing with all kinds of physical and mental illnesses. We try and fight our weaknesses, our addictions, our anxieties on our own. Like the leper, we have isolated ourselves from our loved ones due to the net that the world has encircled us in. And Jesus comes to our village. And like the leper, we see our chance. We see our opportunity. We kneel before Jesus. We ask Jesus for healing. Why? Because Jesus is full of love and full of compassion. Jesus is willing to cross legal and social boundaries to touch and to restore humanity to its original wholeness. Jesus touches the untouchable, the leper and me. So in the lesson today, Jesus teaches us that touch is of God. That the touch of Jesus can heal and make whole. And that touch itself, if used in the right way, in the name of Jesus, has healing properties. And so let us, even in the midst of a possible resurgence, even if we have to put our masks back on, let us touch one another through a hug, a handshake, or a fist bump. Make touch a part of who you are. Make it a point to reach out and hug someone, particularly someone who you know is struggling. I don't know if they do this anymore, but be a volunteer to cuddle preemies in the NICU units of the hospitals around you. Or do a manicure or pedicure for someone at a nursing home. Volunteer in hospice to hold the hand of a dying person. As Christians, let us buck the trend towards a touchless society because we are the hands and feet of Jesus. Here in this world, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. We are called to make known the tenderness of God through a relationship with Jesus Christ. As Rob Mole, the author of this Christianity Today article writes, each time we reach out and touch someone, we communicate the tangible truth of the gospel, that God in Christ reaches out to each of us, drawing us into an intimate relationship with him and with those around us. Book of James reads, this is the New Living Translation, are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing songs of praise. Are any of you sick? You should call the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with the oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, 
you will be forgiven. I just want to add the idea, if you look at this passage, uh, can you put the passage back on again? There's a connectedness between physical health and spiritual health. Both affect one another. That's why he says back here in verse 15, such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. It's connected. There's a reason that, he, uh, that James includes both. Thank you, Kevin. And so we, brethren, use the anointing service for anyone who is sick and suffering, anyone who is struggling with sin, anyone who is experiencing any kind of major life transition. We use it for broken marriages. We use it for healing in the hospitals. We use it for, for people suffering from depression. We use it because God tells us that we can use this. This is, this is a, a prayer that is manifest, manifested in the presence of the oil. The touch of the hand together with the oils and prayers in the name of Jesus offers healing and comfort. Because Jesus healed others through touch, because we know the healing properties of our own touch, because when two or three are gathered in the name of Jesus, Jesus is where? Jesus is here. Because through touch we are blessed, strengthened, and healed, I will invite you, following the singing of the two verses found in our next hymn, to be anointed. Now, just a couple words of instruction as we do this. We will stand to sing the two verses of There is a Balm in Gilead. Following that, I will come forward down here and offer the uh, the anointing service for anyone who would like to come forward. You are still standing at this point, but don't feel like you have to continue to stand. You can sit, you know, if, if it's time for you to sit. And for those who have been anointed, um, they can come back around this way and, and uh, in, a prayer for adult, in a prayerful attitude, they can continue to, to pray. Or if they would like further prayer, intercessory prayer, I've asked uh, Reverend Chantel, that she could provide some more assistance by, by praying with someone or for someone. That person who would like that can just move over to the left side on this side. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Let, let us pray together before we sing our last hymn. Lord God, you are the balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Lord, you have stated in your word that healing takes place in three ways, physical, emotional, spiritual. And so, Lord, as we seek to follow your commands here in the book of James, we seek to live out the instructions that you gave to us many, many centuries ago that we anoint one another, that we seek forgiveness and healing through you, Lord, our life, our love, our healer of every ill. For this we pray in thanksgiving in the name of Jesus.